Greetings, yummy sprinkled chocolate caramel cake. Why do most coins fail? There is an intricate answer I'm going to tell you. It's because founders do not understand how to create value. The number must go up. When Warren Buffett meets the CEO of a company and he analyzes a business balance sheet, he can see as an oracle if it's going to work out or not. He just knows. Why? Because he's seen time and time again the difference between a good CEO and a bad one. Someone who gets it and somebody who doesn't. I have seen many coins, many charts. I have been wrecked like you. I'm an outsider like you. i got to look at things the hard way. We're not insiders. I can now tell you have a few words with someone. You see how they speak. You see how they type. Do they get it? Do they understand how to create value? Most of the time, no. No, they don't know how to do it, okay? This is the beautiful part. First, you must get the number to go up. That's it. Without the number going up, you don't win. In crypto, the community is the asset. The community gathers around the number going up. The number going up is synonymous with people joining. It's Metcalf's law, okay? As you increase N, you get value squared. If you increase the user base by 5, you'll get the value 25. You increase the user base by 10, you'll get it 100. It's gone parabolic. Once you can get the number to go up, which is reflected in a building of the community members, you need more adopters, memes, marketing, sexy brands, whatever it takes. You got to get people in. Once you get that number to go up, this is the next part. The early adopters defend this value. That's what comes next. This is why they never do it. They don't know this part. They're scared. They can't possibly think this works. Yes. When people are given the chance to make money, of course, some people quit. But with good marketing, with good branding, you will get people to stay and defend the value. They will make YouTube videos. They will they will stream. They will get family and friends in. They'll wear the logo. They'll get the tattoo on their forehead. They will keep pushing it. That's the power of the community. They'll wear the colors all over social media. Once you have this value defended, that's now scarce. That's it. Once we have a winner as humans, we want to keep it. We don't want to destroy it. You might look at, this is, this is why it's crazy, okay? I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, and this is actually the truth. When one person, so individually, if you hit 100x, you want to get out. You want to take your money. But if you go back and look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the other moonshots, you can even look at Hex, you can even look at Dogecoin, whatever you want to look at, the 100xs, not the majority of people exited. Only a certain small percentage. Most people stay. Isn't it fantastic? It's it's the truth. A lot of people are doomed to the volatility because they really believe. That's the beautiful part about it. They will now defend what they're in because it's now scarce. Bitcoin maxis do it. Have you seen Bitcoin Miami conference? They have been losing their minds at Bitcoin magazine for allowing people to bring the wizardry meme. They're talking about altcoins, BRC20s. They are going absolutely mental. Why? The old guard of Bitcoin maxis, they have to try get politicians and institutions in now. They're done with the memes. That's early adopters. And if you really want to know the truth, it's because people with $2,000 can't push up the price anymore. They need pensions. They need someone who says, okay, we're going to commit $300 billion. We're going to buy... We're going to DCA for the next four years. That's what they want. That's the only thing they can push up their bags. But they are late stage. Everybody else who starts is not going to be late stage or even middle. It's going to be early. And at the beginning, you need a community. Okay? It did. They did it with Bitcoin. They did it with Ethereum. Pulse Chain is doing it now. People that understand this, this. You see, look, look, look how cute and snuggly Homer is right now in his little bed. When you have an asset appreciating... This is how the early adopters treat it. 
They love it. They form an, a, a chemical bond. They literally get dopamine and oxytocin, whatever they're called. The bonding chemicals. I'm not making this up. That you go through the euphoria, then you go through the pain. It's true. Yes, it's just digital. But that's what happens. I don't make the rules. Go take it up with whoever made humans. So that's why most crypto fail. They don't understand this. The people who are running the coins and the communities, they don't know. What they think is they go, oh, well, if I make a good product, people are going to pay a lot of money for this. See, that's the problem is that sounds right. But it sounds right. It's not true. Okay? A good product is not what they think. See, the, the, the community is actually the product. That's the thing. So if you said to me, I'm going to build a good product, well, I hope your product is a community. If you say to me, I'm going to make a really cool, fun community, I'm going to get 50,000 people rounded together and they don't want to leave this Telegram channel. If you can do that, my my God, you got value there. But if you tell me, I'm going to make this protocol, complex, options, DeFi, it's going to do this, get 2% yield. Yeah, they've tried that. It doesn't work. Go look at the most profitable coins in crypto. you got make a DAO, Yearn earns money. The market doesn't give it any value. No one cares. No one cares. It's true. Go look at the most profitable coins. Nobody cares. It has no effect on the coin itself, and there's no community. So that's the truth, all right? Here's something else that's going to blow your mind, and I'm going to make another video about it later. So we already know Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is not actually cash. Bitcoin is just store of value. The people who got it at the beginning are loving it. Aren't they lucky? Aren't they lucky to have bought Bitcoin early? They got to watch this thing go up so much it became scarce. You know, like you're super early to Bitcoin here and here and here and now it's slowing down. Okay, but the people who got it in early, they watched it become more scarce, store of value. They're looking at it now. They don't want to bring the altcoins in. They don't want to change it. Here's the truth about Ethereum. So you might say, aha, here comes in Ethereum. Okay, well, this is where it's going to get a bit nasty, friends, because Ethereum ain't so lovely too, all right? Ethereum, it's going to blow your mind as well when you look at this one. You know, Ethereum, the, the Ethereum maxis, they don't want the price of the gas fees to go down too much. I know that sucks. You, don't, you won't even believe it, right? But that's the truth. They don't want if they don't want the price of Ethereum to go down so much so that it impacts the original holders, and they don't want the gas. That's the same thing. I know it's going to sound crazy, but it's actually the same thing. You're like, what? So you would think this is this is the crazy part. I know my mind exploded too. All right, let's actually do a mind explosion emoji here to show this. All right. So I know this is going to crazy. This is crazy. Okay. So you would think if Ethereum guys got the gas fees lowered to like five cents, that it would make it a $10 trillion asset and everyone would use it and it would be great. <laughs> That's where you're wrong, my friend. And don't worry, keep your slippers on for this one. Keep your back straight because what I'm about to tell you is going to shock you. All right. The monetary premium attached to Ethereum is very big. People who are OGs in Ethereum, they know this, but they don't talk to you about it. They know that if they drop the Ethereum gas fees and it becomes in the lower value commodity spectrum, they know that the monetary premium, which is the excess premium price placed on, on Ethereum, which is the, the, uh, the store of value, you'd call it, that would disappear. I don't remember the specific number, so don't quote me, but I think it was like 40 to 60% at least. You want to know what gold's monetary premium is? It's like 80%, 80%. It's ridiculous. Gold's industrial use is only like 5 to 8%. That's how crazy this is. So we're dealing with big numbers. Imagine you made a decision to wipe away 80% to 80% of permanent value of the holders. They would never stand for it. Never. But they can't tell you that. They can't tell me that. That's why Ethereum will always be in the category of premium transactions, okay? If you don't believe me, have you heard of a small city called New York? New York is the biggest city in the world, right? One of them. You know, there is scarce property in New York in those main streets. I don't know all the names, but this is rare. Go ask the town planners, Whoever's in charge of New York, go, go ask them, hey, why don't you guys build like 
heaps of apartments and stuff for poor people on the outskirts and just expand it, right? They will never do that, ever. You know why? The wealthiest people who live in the middle do not want to increase the supply of the land. Well, you think, oh, that's inhumane. What do you mean you don't want to? Yes. You know what they'll tell you to do? Stick it. And they'll tell you to go out, go live somewhere else if you can't afford it. That's the truth. That's the truth. This is why you have to be smart now. Your path to riches with me is not in Ethereum. And let me tell you something. Let's go back to the Ethereum chart. When did I go? Nearly all in Ethereum and right here. So it's not like I didn't even buy high friends. I converted to ETH BTC down here. I bought Ethereum at 180 bucks. So I'm speaking the truth to you. Right? I'm, not, I'm not a top buyer. I'm a bottom buyer. As soon as I learned about Ethereum in December 2019, within a few hours, I was literally nearly all in. I was like, okay, I'll get it. This is going up to the moon, okay? Wee! 30X. But look at this. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth, man. Do you want to hear the truth? You are. So yes, if they, and they know this, they're not going to tell you this. If they expanded their block sizes, increased their transactions, and they got Ethereum, instead of costing like 20 bucks, go down to cost like 80 cents, I promise you the price will go down. I know, I know it, it's, it sounds so counterintuitive. You're like, no, that can't happen. Yes, it can happen and it will. Remember my tweet. You got to increase your number. Ethereum is now a constantly demanded blockchain. If you drop the price of how much it costs to transact, you are no longer that sexy premium financial Godzilla, that blue chip thing out there. You're no longer that. You're just that Microsoft data Excel base like everybody else. They know it. Of course they know it. But the scam is, well, I can't call it a scam. The psyops is, the marketing grooming is, they can't tell everybody else that. So they'll say, oh, do layer twos. And this is the vision. You know what they're really doing? It's like if New York said, hey, you can't live with all the rich people. But what we're going to do is right out on the outskirts, we're going to build like these underground bunkers. You basically live in a sewer with all the rats. You know what I mean? But you still be part of New York. So effectively, you're still part of New York, but the poor people don't get to hang with rich people. And if you're like really talented and intelligent and entrepreneurial, you can make your way into the heart of the city and you can take over and you can run with it, start a business or whatever. So it's kind of open, but actions speak louder than words, right? I know this, sound, this sounds crazy, but it's true. Think about it. Of course it's true. You know it's true. We are selling decentralized block space, okay? The internet could only fit certain bandwidth. We were traveling digibytes through the internet back then, and now you can send them anywhere. It's commoditized, all right? We know this. It's like a commodity, you know? It doesn't cost that much to call someone anymore. So the price of them has been going down. What's to stop the demand for blockchain and the price of it from going down in the future? They know they're fighting a losing battle, but their goal is instead of making it go down like that, they would rather it go like, oh, can you go like this and preserve value? It's because people in the start, the early adopters don't want it to go down that much because they're in, they win. It's their life-changing wealth, of course. Just like people in the middle of New York Right, the people who own the witches' apartments, they don't want to screw it up. You won't be able to change the rules. Go see if the New York man and all the other planners, they have no power changing anything. You know this. Some politician comes in and says, hey, we want to put more poor people in here because we think it's fair. What do you think the wealthiest people who own are going to do to them? They're going to get them out straight away. Straight away. It's the same thing with Ethereum. Same thing with Ethereum. But the goal is of them, hey, Let's say we're publicly neutral and we pretend we're for the people, etc. So this is from someone. I told you, man, I got into Ethereum. I have, this is no controversy to me. This is great. Okay, this is absolutely fantastic. I'm just telling you the truth. So when a new kid on the block, like Pulse Chain comes along, it's transactions and are low now, all right? What you're going to hear is if we like actually like make it, make it, make it, and Ethereum costs like $100 to swap, but Pulse Chain's costing like $5 to swap. People who are not in Pulse Chain, they're going to call it a failure. They're going to say, ah, $5 to swap's too much. But our marketing message is going to say, hey, it only costs that much because there's so much demand. 
final message, right? Richie Hart knows this. He could have made Pulse Chain cost 0.001. He could have made it much, much, much less. But he priced it so that it is competitive against Ethereum. Why? Because he's a genius. He takes what works in the real world and he tweaks it. He says, hey, if there are like 100,000 transactions paying $30 on Ethereum, well, if I make my transactions like, you know, 100x cheaper down to 30 cents or a dollar, well, they should be able to come over. And they did. Very interesting. But all the other chains, they're making like near free. So why don't they have everyone there? Very interesting. It's because they have no community. So that's why I'm telling you, the number must go up. It must. New York's property taxes went up. The capital appreciation of their, pro- of their real estate went up. It all went up. The average wealth of the individuals went up. The cost of living goes up. You know the transactions, that's the cost of living as well. The cost of your actions on Pulse Chain and the yield farms, it's going up over time as well. But this is seen as a victory. But to get the next 800,000 people in, you can't tell them, hey, we're the premium one, because they reject Ethereum. It's the same as with the other chains. We are the new kid in the block. But this is the truth. You now have a chance to come in for the next New York City being built. We barely got a school. We don't have a strip club yet. That's how new it is. This is our chance to get in. I don't know what it's going to look like in three, four, five years, but I know the number's going to go up. Tell mum and dad that you love them. Like, subscribe, bell button, all.